15 right now without the instructor. So uh, it's a good, uh, good audience, but the number of people who probably are not going to show up is fine. So this thing is going to be recorded, number one. Number two also is the purpose of the recording is even if you're present, you can still access it later on if you forget something or take notes or something. As a good practice, turn off your microphone. Unless, I mean, I don't really want to turn you off for you. I can do that, but I don't want you to do that. Unless you have a question, a very long question. If it's a short question, you can use the chat in the bottom, in the, in the bottom and then ask the question and it's going to pop up in here and I'll be more than happy to discuss it. If I don't get to it, please let me know, okay? So that we can get to that question. Please do intervene all the time. Like you, I mean, I teach uh, regular classes and not just a lab or other classes. My classes are always interactive when we're doing face-to-face. Uh, uh, -face. And this has been also the case when we do them uh, uh, online. All of my classes are recorded and they go actually to my YouTube account. And later on, I link those uh, uh, recordings back onto Canvas so that everybody have access to them. And you will have a chance actually to go and see uh, how the classes are going, if you have any questions or say, uh, something like that. So that's one thing in terms, of, uh, in terms of the overall practice on how we're going to be doing this thing. Uh, let me share my screen to show you basically where we stand on this thing. Since Milena is here, I want to ask, did you guys cover the electric field and the magnetic field? I need an answer. Did we cover it in lecture or not yet? No, oh, not yet. Okay. So we're going to do a brief, basically, then intro because this lab is still not due today. It's going to be due next week on uh, Tuesday of next week by uh, midnight. Uh, by, not by midnight, I'm sorry, by, <laughs> by the end of the lecture, okay? So uh, we're going to go through the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the concept, basically, and how this thing works. I'm going to also link you to, uh, to uh, uh, one of my accounts online for uh, GeoGebra, where you guys can go and basically see the activity and basically uh, play with the charges and see how the electric field would look like and then uh, fill out the report. Does this sound like a good starting plan? Yes? I need feedback. Okay, good. Alexis <laughs> agrees. Okay, so somebody asked the screen, good. <laughs> okay, very good. Look, we're going to, I'm gonna share my screen, okay, with you guys. So I'm gonna go to my uh, uh, Firefox, which is my browser, and Hopefully you guys are seeing my screen in here. And let me get this thing out of the way because I want to go to a page in here and this is in the way. So the page I want to go to is this one. This is basically when you guys most the labs are here in the confer zoom. I don't know how what Melinda is planning on uh, put, uh, giving you the link, but at least for the labs, I posted them already, and they are happening every uh, night at uh, 7 p.m. If a lab for some reason is canceled, then I will let you know upfront that the lab session is canceled. Otherwise, the lab session is going to happen, and uh, it's going to happen on time. The attendance will be taken. And uh, I don't know, uh, we'll, we'll be recorded later on. And if you're graded for attendance, it's going to also go on your grade. But uh, for me, in terms of, I create two things for you guys on this Canvas page. Jasmine, do you have a question? No? Okay. So I have two things that I want to grab your attention to in my, uh, as far as the lab is concerned on the Canvas page. The first thing is the discussion session. Every lab, when you click on that session, you would see a link in here where it says the lab name, lab eight, for example. You come in here, at this point, there is no thread that was started except I did start this one. You have a question that touch base with the entire lab, with everybody, okay? It's not related to you only or your work or something like that, general question. I don't understand what this question is asking. I don't understand what the lab is asking. I don't understand what that part is asking. You can ask that question in there. Anybody, it doesn't have to be me, anybody can intervene and answer that to the best of their ability. You guys understand this? I want an ongoing discussion 
in here, I will try to answer everything. As I told you in class, I don't know everything, so I will get it wrong sometimes. So I hope that you guys can uh, can help and basically make it uh, progress. So I want this part to be part of the ongoing discussion. If there is no question, that's fine, but hopefully there is an ongoing discussion in here, just like when I make the classroom. Somebody asks a question, somebody answers it, I answer it, I answer it, we go move on. This is in general. I do all actually do this also for my classes when I'm teaching my regular class. I can show you briefly one of my other courses in here to show you how, how that works, to give you an idea of, of how that works. So this is Physics 251, which is one of the classes I teach. And if I go to the discussion, session, since I'm doing the lecture, I have chapter 27 in here, which we started and we actually we're about to finish today. And we start uh, actually by Thursday, I'm sorry, when we finish this chapter. So chapter 27 has a lot of things going on in here. So this is stuff that they have uploaded to YouTube, extra stuff. This is part of uh, some other students asking questions in here, answering them, and somebody else, actually someone else, so, uh, someone else too. The point I'm trying to say in here, it's a good alternative uh, discussion if you can't think of a question right away, come to a discussion session and uh, ask it later if uh, something pops up later on. During the lecture or during the last, if you take notes, please do take notes and later on you might need to come back to them. We're not going to change a lot of what we used to do just because we're online. Actually, it's a very good practice to keep a lot of the things we've been doing as before. So this is one part that I want to bring your attention to. As, as a matter of fact, somebody else asked a question in here and someone else answered it and that was before. And I think two of you uh, were involved in a discussion in here, if you, if, you, if you notice this one. Now, the other part that is of a great interest as far as we're concerned in here is the assignment section. So there are three things that I need you to pay attention to. The discussion, the confer zoom, which you already did, and also the assignments. When you come to the assignment section, these are what the labs are. I want to know, did you guys turn in lab seven or not yet? Um, I didn't. Okay. For, not those, yet. for those who did not turn in lab seven, I there is a couple, in here, a couple of things in here. Not yet, not yet. Okay, so those are parts of the chat thing. Okay, so lab seven, if you did not turn it in, don't turn it in yet. Okay, I'm working on a formula for it and I will let you know exactly how that works. If you have it done already and it's ready to go, namely you have already the, uh, the uh, basically, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you've already scanned it, you already took pictures of it, there is no need to basically go back and do something else, just go ahead and submit that one. So I go to lab seven in here. I'm viewing it as an instructor. So for you, the view it may be different than me. But I changed the format from a regular printed page that you bring to me into a scanned document or a picture taken in here. Let me check the chat quickly. Okay, so uh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, that's why I'm asking about Lab 7. So people are asking about, uh, because it, we, we were supposed to submit it and then something happened, and then uh, later on they told us you cannot come back to school. So that's the confusion about it. So you need to come in here and submit that lab if you already are done with it. If you didn't do it, don't, if you didn't finish basically writing it, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how lab eight works, and from lab eight you're gonna see how lab seven also is going to, uh, to work for you guys. Okay, lab eight, that's what we're here to Lab eight, the due date on it, first of all, is next week, okay? Namely on, uh, what is it? Uh, what is the uh, next week? This, uh, let me check what is the date. Okay. It's gonna be the seventh, Tuesday the seventh at uh, 9.50 p.m., okay? It should say in here, okay? So that's when it's due. And again, it's a file upload. But before you start doing anything, the lab instructions are in here and they're in a PDF form. This is what we usually print and I give you or I upload it to you guys so that you read the instructions 
and try to understand them and basically go through them and do the activities on your own, okay? Working with somebody else. This is still true. So if you want to work with somebody else, and if you have somebody that you would want to work with, you can come in here. If you want me to assign the groups, I can assign the groups for you guys. You can come to this uh, discussion and we can make a mini group and work together on it. If you want to open the whole discussion for everybody, I don't have a problem with it. Just ask a question in there and we can pick it up from there. What I want to see is actually that you guys start working on the lab as soon as possible, preferably during the lab session. That's we're talking in principle in general, okay? Now, this is the lab report form. RF stands for report form. This is the name of the lab, uh, electric and magnetic fields. And the F stands for a fillable file. This is different. This is a PDF file that you can open and actually fill uh, manually. Uh, this file is uh, best to be opened because, you know, browsers like uh, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, and Safari, they all now open the PDF files. Do not use any of them for this specific file. The reason why you don't want to use that is because this is a fillable file, and fillable files need to be saved. And by default, any browser does not save anything, okay? As a matter of fact, if you try to open this file in here, uh, with, uh, so I'm gonna right click on it and try to open it in a, in a new tab with, uh, with Firefox. Firefox actually is smart enough to tell you, do not do that. So I'm gonna open it with other, and I'm gonna pick up Firefox. Where is my Firefox in here? Yeah, here it is. And say open. Firefox has, do you guys see the file in here opened with Firefox or not? Yes? Yes. Okay. okay, very good. So Firefox was able to open it and you guys see it. Look at the warning on the top in here. This document, this document contains forms the filling of uh, the contains forms, the filling of forms seeds is not supported. Firefox is smart enough to tell you, look, this, file, this PDF file is a special file. I cannot handle it. Please don't use me, okay? On the other hand, if you try to open it with, uh, what am I at? Where is the tab I am at? Let me move this thing out of this. Is it? No. I'm sorry, I'm lost a little bit in here. Oh, here it is, okay. So let me get that file back on here. So on the other hand, if you try another browser, uh, like uh, uh, Chrome, Chrome doesn't tell you that, that warning. It just opens the file for you and starts filling it for you. But then you work and you spend a lot of time. Let me open this file for you guys on the, with Adobe because that's the way I, I, do, uh, I do it in here. I am recommending that you do it. So let's open it in here with that. Uh, uh, open and it's telling me to open it with Acrobat Reader. I don't know if you see the dialog box or not, but I'm going to open it with Acrobat Reader and we're going to put it, doesn't matter where I'm going to put it here. So to save it, so I'm going to save it there. And let me wait for it to be open first, if it ever opens it. Okay, I need to uh, uh, stop sharing that because probably you're looking at my, still my Firefox because that's the, uh, the problem with Zoom is that it only shares one application at a time. I'm gonna stop Firefox, okay? I'm gonna come back in here and share this file with you which is open now in Acrobat. I have the full version of Acrobat so I don't know if you guys see it or not, okay? Does everybody see this file in here? Okay, let me at least see somebody, yes, okay. So a few people are saying yes, so that must be open for everybody then. When you open it with, uh, with a PDF uh, dedicated uh, software like uh, Adobe Reader, this is how probably it's going to look like to you. It looks like a file just like it did when we were on, on, uh, on, uh, on Firefox earlier, except 
with the uh, Acrobat right now, it has this feature in here, highlight existing fields. If you click on that, it will show you the place where you can start filling things. And this is like normal text, basically, you fill, except that, I don't know if you noticed this red background in here, there is a red background on some of the boxes. This is red, this is red. This has no box around it. The reason why they are red is because they are required fields. If I, if I don't, if I forget to put my name in here, and I'm done working on this file and try to save it, it will not save. Everything is lost. So where it's red, it's a must. You have to fill something in there. If you forget to put uh, something in there, it's not gonna save. So if your name, you're gonna put your name. I'm gonna put my name in here. Okay. So that's how I usually type my name. And that's it. So now I'm going to come to the opening paragraph, something in it. Uh, uh, if I put something in it in here, uh, whatever it is, this is, Ivan? No? Okay, so again, I need to fill out this whole thing in here. The rules still apply in the sense that please be as detailed as it can be without having to uh, be too verbose, but at least describe what is the purpose of the entire lab. And the first section, if you read your instructions, you will find out it has to do with the magnetic field and trying to trace the magnetic field using a compass. So magnetic field uh, lines in here. You see, notice in here that if I make a typo in here, it helps me. That's good, because if I forget to spell fields, it's going to tell me that's not spelled correctly. So it has a rich text format, so that's good. Then I start filling this, go to this uh, field lines in here. After I finish all of the stuff that I need to do, <coughs> there is question one. I try to answer question one. What is magnetic field line? What produces a magnetic field? What must be placed in in said field in order to produce a magnetic force. So basically all them based on reading the instructions. If a magnetic field is produced by an ensemble of uniformly moving electric charges, where are this a uniformly electric charge in a permanent magnet? Again, all of these things is related to reading in that. And we're gonna go through these questions later on. Okay. So the point being in here, after you answer all of these questions, and we come and do all of these things. The results in here are required. The results in here are the goal for the second part for the electric field also is required. Then you come in here and you did everything you're supposed to do and you find the results and you do the closing paragraph, which is the summary for everything, okay? So basically we're done with this, uh, with this file and I'm ready to upload it. So when it comes time to upload again, you go back to your Firefox. I'm gonna stop the sharing quickly in here with this file. And I'm going to go back into uh, sharing Firefox. Okay. Now this accept file upload. In other words, from now on, there will be no printed document sent to me. It doesn't matter because of this uh, social distancing. We really have to observe it for this uh, for the rest of the semester. At least that's the rest of the foreseeable uh, future. That's what I'm, I was told. So anyway, this is basically uh, we're done with this part now. There is another file that for some reason I forgot to include in here that you will need, okay? So I'm gonna include it right now. This file is for me to print and draw, okay. So I'm gonna put it in here. So I'm gonna edit this file in here because it's important that we have to have this file in here. And this is the file. because you need to do this too. So this next file in here, close the new browse, and this is Physics 100 Report Labs. Let me look at the latest, and it's this D file, and I'm gonna put it in the labs folder, upload. Okay. So you will need this uh, this second file. Let me uh, exit the uh, yeah, it's published. So we're good at it. 
So you need this file in here, and if you click on this file, let me go back into that folder in there and find it. Let me uh, start the sharing again of this uh, Firefox and go back into uh, my PDF file. So this is the second file you will need as part of the report, okay? What you have in here, you have bar magnets in here uh, with the North Pole and the South Pole. And you're gonna draw the field lines, okay? The magnetic field lines, we're gonna talk about that, okay? We're gonna draw the field lines. And the biggest concern is where this two magnets are pointing north to north because the magnetic field will emanate from the North Pole and die in the South Pole. Same thing in here, but it cannot go to the South Pole. So it has to really, so there is a repulsion in here and there is a repulsion in here. So that's basically what you experience. And if you take two bar magnets and place them north to north or south to south, they will repel each other. That's, that's uh, some of the basic properties of the bar magnets. If you take a bar magnet and you put it north to south, they're gonna attract actually one another. And that you can express in terms of the field line. Like this situation in here, I have a north, facing south and south facing north, the field line can actually emerge from here, this one and end up in the other one, at least in the region between them. On this side, they still go north to south and north to south. The arrow will point which way the, uh, the, the needle of the compass points. You know how that's how we discover magnetism this way. That's how we learn about magnetism. For a magnetic field, you, all you need is just a compass with the needle pointing always to the north pole. And, uh, the North Pole actually is the south. So the needle will be pointing this way, will be pointing actually to the south magnetic pole. This is one of the uh, things that you need to do. Like this bar magnet, they're south to south, so there is a repulsion in here. And this bar magnet, there's an attraction in here. And this is actually the donor magnet, they're one side north and the other side south. So, Again, there is a repulsion in here, there is an attraction in there, and, okay? So, this is in a nutshell basically what, uh, what, I was, uh, what I'm going to talk to you in terms of the lab in, in general. But before we do that, we didn't have a lot of the lecturing stuff for the concepts that we need to cover. I need to cover some of these concepts. Now, this needs to be done manually. You're gonna print this one. Remember somebody asked, I think it was, I don't know if it was Brendan or somebody else asked in the beginning whether or not we should print the uh, labs and bring them with us or not. And I said, do not do that and I tell you, until I tell you to do so. So this one needs to be printed and somehow either you use your phone to take a good picture of it. After you take a good picture of it, look at the picture. If you can't see it, I can't either. So make sure that it's readable to you that you can see your handwriting. Okay, uh, what if you don't have a printer? It's gonna be a problem because you're gonna draw this one in here. There is a, uh, a tool, okay. You know guys, you have access to a free version of uh, the question that Katie and asked, and it's actually a, actually a very good question, is what if we don't have a printer, okay? Actually, Martin also asked the same question. Uh, there is a, uh, you guys know that you have access to a free version of Office 365. I don't know if you know that or not. Okay, because of your account as students. So uh, um, uh, we're gonna work on that one. Let me show you basically another tool that you can do with, uh, with uh, Office 365. And that's actually the one I use for my, uh, all of my teaching. So let me stop the sharing of uh, the PDF file. Okay, somebody, and I think Melina is mentioning, uh, is there a markup even for uh, the free, I don't know that, uh, that basically you can use a uh, markup option, this can work. So basically uh, from Adobe, I'm not too familiar with this thing in here. Where is the comment to me? I have the professional version and that's why sometimes I don't know how this thing would work if I don't have the, uh, 
and somebody is saying that the library is open for uh, this purpose, hopefully. So you can go and print documents in there. So, okay, I have the, the full version of Adobe. So I have the Acrobat uh, actually uh, version. So you go to the content. No, actually not. I think the comment section. And you can use the drawing tools in there, like the pen tool in here. And basically, since this is the North Pole, you're going to draw the magnetic field line this way. Oh, it's going to be a nightmare if I have to do it with this thing in here. Okay. Okay. And I cannot use my, uh, it does not have a, uh, it has to be the mouse. Okay. If the library is open. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the one I'm using. So that's, so if we're going to use a mouse, I mean, you can still try it. Okay. This is basically how the field line would go. So right now in here, it's going to be compressed on this side in here. It's going to be compressed on this side in here. And the field lines will be uh, kind of, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This would come this way. I, I, I did a mistake in here, so that's wrong. Because this is north to south, so I'm drawing it this way. So there is an attraction in here, and there is an attraction in here. So that's basically some of the uh, representations that you would do if you don't have, if everything else fails. Apparently, there is the end of the comment section. You can uh, use this uh, pen in here, but uh, preferably, I would rather have you at least try to uh, print this document if you can from the library or some other resource and uh, uh, scan it or do something to it. I think the library probably will have a scanner too. If not, I know uh, Microsoft has this uh, software which I use extensively called OneNote. I'm going to stop the sharing of this file in here and go to OneNote. And uh, you can upload the PDF file as an image in here too. You can insert it. Okay, first of all, let me get into uh, the sharing first. You know what? Let me go back in here. So this is uh, my uh, great tool, which I use extensively actually right now. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, Microsoft uh, OneNote. And for this one, I use it actually as a whiteboard. I write with it whatever I want to write, basically, as if it's a whiteboard. So if I want to draw that picture again from the bar magnet, I like to stand in here. So this is my bar magnet. This is the north N. This is south S. This is another bar magnet in here. This is the north. This is the south. So the field line will leave the north pole, come to the south pole. Will leave the north pole, come to the south pole. Will leave the north to the south pole. And we'll leave the North Pole in here and come to this South Pole. And actually, we'll leave the North Pole in here and come to this South Pole. So here, actually, there is a small, oops, this way. And there is a small region in here. So basically, that's what the field line would look like, more or less, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the bar magnet. Do you have it backward? Yes, they do. Oh, man, terrible. This line in here is no good. This line actually is from here to here. I hope you guys caught this thing in here. It's always from north to south, okay? So uh, that's basically uh, some of the things that you can use. So you can actually do the whole drawing. And again, if you can do paint, you can do paint, actually. If you, uh, that's a last resort, too. You can draw a rectangle, put the north out, and draw the line. So that's another solution. You guys are familiar with, micro, uh, with the the paint if you have Microsoft or you have any other software that can draw this thing. Bottom line is, I want you to have a feel of what the magnetic field looks like, okay? The field line, that is. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the concepts because we're doing the lab and we need to understand how these things work. Since you guys didn't cover a lot of the uh, stuff in lecture yet, in part because of these things in here. Uh, it's a good practice when you're doing the lecture to do, uh, uh, to take notes in here, okay? To take your notes. And uh, usually what I do with my students, I give them my notes, I upload my notes again as a PDF file after the class, but uh, don't rely on them. 
Don't rely on your instructor's notes. In other words, still, you have to do your job because if you don't take your notes and rely on somebody's notes or somebody's recording, you're not going to learn much. You only learn if you do. That's basically how the rule goes. And if you don't do anything and you're just watching YouTube or watching videos, you're going to get tired and basically uh, you lose focus and you're not going to, nothing is going to be retained. So that's the key to learning is by doing, including taking notes. When you're taking your online lecture, as much as you're taking your uh, classroom lecture, even though the, probably there is a PowerPoint going or there is a video going, you have to pull your notes. And you come up with a plan for your notes and take your notes. Part of the idea is that while you're taking your notes, they help you to stay focused. And also, if there is a question or there is an ambiguity, you can put a note on it and you can circle it and you come back later on for it. You take ownership of that, uh, of that stuff and it becomes yours. And later on, you can ask questions and you benefit from it. If you just watch somebody doing things like I just did, you're not going to learn much. Okay? Hopefully you guys are, are, are doing that too. Okay, so I have a touch screen uh, computer. That's why it's kind of uh, easy for me to write with my actually finger, my pointer in here as is my can. So I write everything in there. And uh, so for the electric field, electric field is produced by charges basically. So if you have a charge, which is a something that you probably uh, so this is a point charge, and a point charge, is, think of it as a, it's just like the mass, basically, the fundamental property of particles. They have charges. <clears throat> they take a balloon, if I take a, if I grab a, a plastic material on my skin in here and put it against a piece of paper, it's going to grab that piece of paper. This is something that you experience. People were experimenting with this thing, and they basically discovered that there is a fundamental law First of all, there are two types of charges, apparently. They labeled one as positive and they labeled one as negative. And the fact that it's negative doesn't mean that it's bad, okay? This is just the, uh, the part of the... Uh... Have you guys seen that movie, or actually read the book? What is it, that thing there about uh, the cat in the hat? Anybody? Did nobody watch it? I mean, I must be the only young person in here, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys watch that movie, the uh, the one with the, the two kids and the cat with the hat and become crazy? Okay, let's see here if somebody is courageous enough to admit it. Yes, I do. Very good. <laughs> okay, did you guys remember thing one and thing two? <laughs> okay, very good. Thing one and thing two, and uh, thing one is known to be known, and uh, the reason why and thing two says that uh, I need to be called whatever, whatever, and thing one says that I am thing one, and people have to basically accept it. So I don't know if you remember that line or not. Same thing in here. There is a positive charge and a negative charge. The fact that this is positive was actually an accident in nature because people noticed that some charge, uh, Electricity flowed from one direction to the other and gave it positive direction. It turns out that that was wrong completely. That messed up everything for us later on because that convention, I mean, right now we know actually the negative charges are the ones that do electricity, the ones that are responsible for current. So when the current flows from the positive to the negative, actually what's going on is the charges are moving from the negative to the positive. So if we meet tomorrow some other civilization and they already have, are working on electricity, they probably get their sign correctly. And they get the negative charges actually being positive and the positive charges being negative, okay? But for us, we have positive charges and we have negative charges. Positive charges is a depletion of electrons from, from atoms, they become positive and negative charges are basically an addition of electrons and they become negative. What we notice is that positive charge attracts a positive to negative charge, and positive charge repels a, a positive charge, and negative charge repels a negative charge. That's basically some of the fundamental laws in nature. And the force of attraction is inversely proportional to the distance between them, but it's proportional also to the, to the two charges themselves. Now think of it this way. If I have a charge sitting in here. And if I bring a negative charge to it, 
The negative charge will know that that positive charge is in there, so it's going to be attracted to it. You guys understand that? So this is a negative charge. This is a positive charge sitting in here. Okay. If I have a negative charge in here to begin with, okay, I lost my pen in here. If I have a negative charge to begin with in here, so this is negative. And if I bring my still my negative charge in here, it's going to repel from it. Again. I can find out that this charge is moving one way or the other, just basically watching it. The fact that I have a positive or a negative charge in here, if I have a charge somewhere in space, and if I bring it up closer to it, it's going to move away further, if it's the same charge, the same sign of the charge, or stronger towards it, if it's a different charge, opposite sign. So this is what we're gonna do, okay? Imagine me or you or anybody walking with the charge. Charge, the unit for the charge is the Coulomb. Imagine that we're carrying with us one Coulomb charge. Okay? So we go to the store and tell them, please give me one Coulomb charge. You're holding one Coulomb charge in your hand. And one Coulomb charge, and you bring it somewhere in space, attached to a spring, and then think, if the charge is sitting still, doesn't compress the spring or pull on the spring, that means the charge is not near any other charge. You guys understand that? But if the charge now all of a sudden is stretching the spring or compressing the spring, that means that one pull on charge now feels the presence of other charges. That is what we define as the electric field. So the electric field is actually the effect of collection of charges that change the space around them in such a way one Coulomb charge is either attracted to it or repelled from it. So that's how we discover the electric, electric field. So that's how we do it. In practice, you cannot have one Coulomb charge. One Coulomb charge is a huge charge. It's gonna kill you, actually. Don't do it, okay? <laughs> uh, we usually deal with a micro Coulomb, okay? But if you cannot afford a, a one Coulomb charge, just deal with a micro Coulomb and whatever value that is, just multiply it by a million. So that's how we basically uh, discover the electric field. In practice, though, the way we do it is we, 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 uh, we, we actually uh, don't do that at all. We have uh, what is called the potential, the electric potential. You know how you plug your device to your 110 or 120 volts on the wall? That is what the electric potential is. So the potential, and we measure the potential, and we find all of the region where the potential is the same. So if this is, let's say, for example, 12 volt potential, this region is called an equipotential region. And then we move on to the next point in space and find all, let's say, for example, the seven volt uh, region. So that's another equipotential. And we move to the same region, another region in space, and measure the voltage in there, and we find that all of this region, and let's say, for example, 6.5 volts, okay? All of these regions are so-called equipotential. They have the same potential. That's what equi means, okay? You guys notice that there is a bigger drop in potential from 12 to 7, than from 7 to 6.5? There is a 5-volt gap between 12 and 7, yes? 12 minus 7 is 5. And there is only half a volt drop between uh, 7 and 6.5. That is how in practice we measure the electric field. The electric field is the rate of drop between successive uh, equipotential regions. The bigger the drop, the stronger the electric field. And it's always perpendicular to this region. So that's how we do it actually in practice. I know we don't have access to the lab, but that's how we would have done it if we did the lab. We would find the equipotential region and then we find the next equipotential region, and the next equipotential region, we'll see how big drop that is. Actually, with the, the, the power source goes from zero to 12 volts, and you're gonna draw the line in there, and you're gonna find the equipotential region in there. Let me pull another activity in here. It's on GeoGebra. I'm gonna stop the sharing of the screen quickly here, with you guys. That will help you do the lab. And I'm gonna go to share, still my Firefox. But I will tell you how to get to that page, okay? 
On the lab instructions, it tells you in here, of course, you're going to do this activity. Hopefully, you can do it one way or the other. We just discovered you can do it actually with paint. And, uh, and once you do it with paint, you can upload just the file. You don't have to print it. Just upload the painted file, okay? I can take that. And uh, you're going to click on this link in here, okay? So let me go back in the bottom in here and save this thing in here. You see here where it says the electric field, that's a link. That's actually an external link that will take you to my GeoGebra page. Hopefully it's going to work. GeoGebra has, I mean, the page has a lot of code behind the to make this thing. As a matter of fact, you will see what that is. That's why it takes some time to load, especially right now since we have uh, this session uh, going. It takes uh, even longer time because the internet is extremely slow right now. If it doesn't load as quickly, I'm going to upload it actually internally. Okay, very good. You guys see what's going on? You guys see the page loaded? Okay, at least one person responded. Let's see. What is my uh, chat session? Here it is. Let's make sure that I have everybody. Oh man, my chat thing is gone. I need a verbal confirmation. Desiree. Yes. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. At least I wanted to make sure I'm not talking by myself because. And then, uh, and then uh, I was talking and talking and talking and then for about 10 minutes and they told me that they don't see anything. That's why now I want a visual confirmation that everything is working. Right now I have four charges, okay? I'm gonna reduce them to two charges only. So I'm gonna drag this thing in here. Oh man, it's going extremely slow now. Okay, I don't like that. So I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work. Web page is showing your browser. Would you like to do that? Okay, this was, okay, so now we dropped it to three. Let me drop this one to two, actually, if I can. If not, I'm gonna do it live on my, uh, on my, uh, on my computer because I have that file in here. Our browser is, okay. It seems like it's giving, okay, good. It dropped to two, that's good. But it's not gonna work well, okay. So when you guys ha have it uh, uh, on your web, on your computer, it should not be a problem. So I'm gonna put it, on my computer to show you how that's gonna work out, okay? When you are looking at it from your end, let me first of all pull it, find it first of all on my computer. Okay, let me go in here. Please move this window away from your share screen. Why? Your screen is paused, okay. So I'm gonna see in here. And hopefully, let me go into my sharing in here and... Okay, do you guys see this now on my computer? It's a local version. Yes? Yes. Yep. Okay, very good. So this is what you would do when you click on that link, you're gonna see it actually live and it's interactive, okay? So I reduced the number of chargers to two chargers, and I'm going to move this charge to this point in here. And right now, this charge has a value of 0 0.6. Let's call it a 0 0.6 Coulomb. I'm going to make this one a negatively charged uh, particle of negative 0.6. So the red one is negative, the blue one is positive, and these are the field lines. This is similar to what magnets work, okay? Uh, for the case of magnetism, you only you, you can only come with pairs. You cannot come with uh, with uh, with uh, basically a, a number that is uh, uh, odd of uh, of poles. If you have a north and a south, and you decide, you know what, I hate this configuration. I want to get only the north by itself and the south by itself. So you take a bar magnet and you cut it in half in order for you to isolate the north by itself and the south by itself. What do you think happens? You think you'll end up with the uh, north by itself and south by itself or something else that will happen? Just a guess, okay, if you didn't take the class yet. When you take a bar, a bar magnet and cut it into, I see the chat in here. Let me see if, oh man, I lost my chat room in here. Something is weird in here. I'm sorry guys who are chatting. 
for some reason I can't see your uh, your uh, thing in here. I know I'm going to get to them later on. To south to north. So we'll, can we cut them or not? Can we have a south by self and a north by self? No. Okay, very good. That's what I needed to know. <laughs> okay. So for the case of magnet, if you take a magnet and you cut it into two different uh, pieces, trying to isolate north by self and south by self, you can. For charges, you can. You can always have a positive charge by itself and a negative charge by itself. For a bar magnet, if you cut it in two, you're going to end up with two new magnets where it used to be, where you made the cut, that's where the split is going to happen. So if this was south, this would be north. Okay? So you'll end up with a new magnet. And you decide, you know what? I don't like that. I want to cut this into two pieces again. I want to isolate the north by itself and the south by itself. You take a magnet and you cut it in half, the same thing will happen. You'll end up with magnet again with a north and a south. And you continue on doing that. At some point, you will come to a point where when you make the last cut, you will lose both north and south. So either you have a north and a south together or nothing at all. So that's what happened with magnetism. So they always come in pairs. And this is one of the uh, uh, facts in nature that we know of, at least in this part of the universe, that you cannot have a north by itself and a south by itself and magnets that come in pairs. Now, uh, for charges, uh, they come in uh, together. So if I'm doing the magnet, this I can simulate the magnetic field in here. If I strengthen, for, for magnetism, they come with the same strength. For charges, you can have stronger than the now. The positive charge is a lot stronger than what the negative charge in absolute mag uh, value in here. So right now, I changed both of them to uh, the biggest possible value on this uh, slider and I have them both at the same value. So this is a configuration of the uh, electric field, that is the field lines. If I follow, that's what the needle is going to be pointing. So you can simulate this one in your classroom in your, uh, for your magnetism to see how that is going to work for your uh, case of magnetism. So I'm gonna come in here and turn the electric strength. You see how strong it is? It's, this shows you by the length of the vector how the strong the magnetic that the electric field is. The same thing for magnets, by the magnetism. So I say weaken the charge and make it very weak. Now here is that it's weaker and weaker. It's 0.5, which is the other one where the field lines are used for the negative charge, okay? And if I continue this side in here and make them both negative, look what happened. These are both negative charges and they should repel one another. They should not attract one another. So the field lines for the negative charge, that's where the negative electric field, where the field will go and die. It's like a, like, like a sink. For the water, it goes and goes and falls into the sink. That's what the negative charge looks like in terms of uh, electric field. In terms of uh, positive charges, it's actually that's where the electric field will emanate from, just like the North Pole. So the electric field is coming from the North, or they coming from the positive charge and coming from the positive charge. And in here, because both of them are trying to push electric field lines, these two charges, they will repel from, uh, from one another. So that's how it's represented in here by the, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, electric field. In terms of the uh, uh, magnetic direction, both of them are moving the, uh, the field lines and they're repelling each other, basically. And if I change them to both of them, to being, uh, one of them to being negative, now, one is pushing field lines and the other one is pulling on them, so now there is an attraction. If I go back in here and make them both negative, so again, both of them are pulling the field lines, and in doing so, this region is being depleted of field lines, and it's pushing both of them away from one another. So that's how basically I can explain the electric field and the magnetic field using this activity, except that in the case of magnetism, these two, they come in tandem, they come together. You cannot isolate positive and negative. So if this is positive, the other one is negative, and they work together. So that's how you represent your electric, their magnetic fields, okay? For the electric field, you can do them with this one. Now, if I want to simulate two magnets, that's why I left it with four in here. I'm going to have four charges, and let me position them correctly. So is this the negative charge? So this one in here. And I take this one here and this one and make it negative also. The green one, I'm going to make it negative. And I'm going to put it this way here. And I'm going to make this one to be positive. 
And now I have simulated basically an actuality. That's why it was loading extremely slow on your uh, on your uh, on the browser earlier because you see how many lines. All of this are actually the math behind this is tremendous. There's a lot of math behind it just to make it look like what you would have done if we were sitting in the lab with the iron filings and bar magnets, and it's much easier to do actually in the lab than to do it on, on the computer. But hopefully, it's going to work for you on the uh, on the uh, computer. Now. We have four charges basically in here. Simulating this one is negative so the red one is negative two it's the south pole that's where the field lines will go and die uh, q2 is positive that's what uh, the north pole is going to look like and q4 now is negative i mean positive that's where the north pole is in here the field lines are going like this so that confirms to the drawing that i showed you guys earlier the field lines are coming from positive to negative from north to south the field line is coming in here from uh, north to south, and the field line is coming actually from north to south in here. So basically, two bar magnets, except that they're flipped, so they're going to attract one another. You guys see that? So there is a complete attraction here side by side, and the two things will be merged. Okay? What I could do under the same configuration is turn this one to positive and negative, sorry, and turn this one to negative. Now I have two bar magnets propelling one another. Basically, Q4 is negative, Q2 is negative, Q1 is positive, and Q3 also is positive. So basically, I have two bar magnets, north facing north and south facing north, uh, south, and those two magnets will either flip and attract or repel one another. So if you hold them in place, they will repel. So this is in terms of uh, the uh, the uh, the. Uh, the uh, electric field, electric charge, and electric field is the same as magnets, except when you have charged charges paired. As a matter of fact, that chapter 27 that you saw for physics 251 deals with the same topic, except for uh, for cast based course, and that's what we were doing all today: is comparison between the so-called electrical dipole and the magnetic uh, dipole, which are the same thing. At least mathematically, the analogy is perfect in here. So in terms of the strength of the electric field, this is two magnets basically repelling each other. Look at the zone between them. They have basically pushed everything out of the area in here. So they're repelling one another. If they take this one and flip the polarity on it and make it positive two, and this one is two in here, what is the, why do I have things bad in here? Why, what happened to the strength? Let me look at the field lines. Much, yeah. There is an attraction in here, and there is a uh, continued mutual attraction in here. This is attracting that. You can push the analogy just to some extent in here. And of course, I am not able to line outside because I'm setting view algebra. Do not draw anything outside of that zone. You can see it from the bottom in here where there's the attraction is happening, actually. Okay? Okay, so this is in terms of the activity that is on GeoGebra. Any questions about this? So basically, the purpose of this one is to help you uh, visualize the electric field and the magnetic field that you're going to be drawing in the last part of your uh, lab. Any questions? No, Mike, I was probably going to ask questions. No questions. No questions. Very good. So let's go into the lab now. Lena, if you feel you need to intervene, please do so. Okay, so you can turn on your uh, phone, uh, uh, microphone, and intervene whenever you want to. Okay, or anybody for that matter. This is this is a this is a an open session, so everybody can uh, is welcome to uh, to contribute. Okay, so ask, again, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, Professor, because I was like at my dinner table when I saw this email. Um, so, like, should, do you suggest that I open my laptop or start my laptop up? Uh, like, for for uh, for this session? Yeah, because I mean, I'm seeing all this stuff on my cell phone, but like, I don't have it um, on my laptop right now. That's fine. Actually, you can do it on your uh, laptop right now if you want to. But like I said before, this whole thing is going to be is recorded right now. And is it recorded or not? What happened to it? Do you guys see? Okay, let me stop the sharing first of all right now. It should tell me if it's recorded or not. Yeah, it's recording. So there is, the session is still recorded. 
So I'm planning on posting this one the minute it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, we're done. And because this recording lasts for a few hours, basically two hours or something or three hours, it's going to take some time for Zoom to compile the video. And then once it's compiled, I'll have to download it and remove any personal uh, stuff that you guys have in there, that things like that, and try to do some finishing touches and upload them uh, for you guys to be able to see them later on. So if you didn't have to, if you couldn't do any of this, especially that last part, namely the fact that uh, you have to do a simulation, I want you to really do it on your own. And if you're into some difficulties, let me know. I want you to simulate different possible configuration for the magnet, similar to the different uh, questions that you have in there. All I did was two bar magnet with the north facing north and south facing south. And I did them backward, the north facing the south and the south facing north. And you're going to do them for different stuff in there. The GeoGebra file, is it loading properly? OK. If, uh, yeah, there is a problem with the internet, definitely. I don't know if you're hearing the sound correctly or not, but at least for uh, one of my classes, where I have over 40 students the other day, uh, that's why I'm asking that people turn off their speakers. I mean, the sound started to become coming kind of a, uh, basically, there was a delay in it. And I think the problem has to do with the internet. So what I would suggest as far as the file itself, wait for it until uh, until uh, where the session is over and try it again and let me know. The GeoGebra file did not open as the magnetic field for me. No, it should not. It should open the electric field. There is no magnetic field in here. I mean, uh, I didn't do it to simulate the magnetic field in, the, in there because the magnetic, it's much easier to do with the uh, Coulomb's law actually in this case than uh, with the, uh, that's what governs the electric field lines than to do it with the magnets in there because the math is kind of uh, hard to do. The link is not working for me. I mean, uh, the link should work. I mean, I was able to open it and it's the page in there. Okay, so it just opens a new file without anything on it. It takes time because uh, this file has a lot of calculations and a lot of computations in it. So please uh, hold on to it, wait for a few minutes. Uh, Wait for a few minutes before it opens because it's, it's a big file. It has a lot of calculations in it, number one. Number two also, because it's a browser-based, uh, some of the calculations use JavaScript, and the JavaScript relies on your computer. Now, if this fails, if this whole thing fails, what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to take several snapshots for you guys and uh, send them to you guys as being as if this is the animation that you're going to use, OK? OK. So uh, can we at least give it a chance for you guys to try it at least tonight or some tomorrow or something like that? And you email me or go to the discussion board and let me know how it does. May I ask a question, Professor? Go ahead, go ahead. Don't, don't, uh, just go ahead. Sorry, I'm so new to this. Um, uh, is this assignment due tonight? Like, is it due tonight no. or is it just, okay. Next week, Thursday of next week, okay? Because oh, we're, okay. Okay. we're going through transition right now. I mean, when you signed up for this class, you signed up for it to be a face-to-face -face -face class, number one. Number two, labs are not supposed to be online. That's my philosophy. The only reason why we're doing on, um, them online is this is big deal. I mean, I'm really, when we look at this, uh, this thing in here on, on, on the news, it's really a big problem that is happening all over. So we want to make sure that everybody is safe as possible. Let me take a quick snapshot of the attendance right now. Okay. Okay. And let me save the file. Thing. Okay. The attendance is done. And uh, so that's at least for the, uh, so we're going through transition. So we need to work out together on this thing in here. And hopefully we get things done. What I want you to come out with is that you you're really are learning something from this and trying to do uh, to go through this thing and learning concepts that hopefully will be useful for to you. And uh, I don't understand, Micah. How about an auto? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> don't think that's gonna apply. Okay, I was thinking that there is something in there. Okay. First of all, I am not the person to answer that. Number two, number one, number two. Also, you really have to earn that that grade. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
So uh, let's continue in here. Let's go back into that file in here because we really have to get some uh, to discuss the lab too. Okay. And so I need to share back the uh, the PDF file. I need to open the another file in here for you guys. The one with the lab instruction that we normally do. <coughs> uh, somebody. Uh, okay, some of these people like Fidel's icon, please tell me who you are because I don't know who you are. Okay. When you're coming with the phone, please tell me who you are. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if somebody like got all up in here, Professor, but someone's expressing some weird stuff. Okay. So never mind in there, okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh <laughs> Okay, we'll have to get that thing worked out. Anyway, so let's continue with this thing in here. That's why it's very important, guys, don't, do not share this link with anybody, okay? And I know I put the, I don't think that I posted you guys the link, I just put it on Simper Zoom, and that's what they told us to do, is that you guys need to go on Simper Zoom and pull it from there. So uh, uh, we, we should not really, uh, uh, we should not really, uh, how should I say, uh, send this link via email because they're being hijacked and people are using them and uh, accessing them, and which is kind of stupid if you ask me. I mean, uh, okay. 